G'day everyone, Jamie Chapman for another episode of 3 Minute Histology. Today we're going to be having a look at the cervix and this is actually one of my favourite sections in all of the sections that we have available on our digital slide box. Um, it's so fascinating this uh, tissue, this organ, uh, this part of the uterus. Um, so um, in case you're unaware, the cervix is uh, of course like the cervical region of your neck, it's, your, it's the neck of the uterus. Um, but structurally and functionally it's very different to the rest of the uterus. Um, so we know that the, the uterus undergoes a menstrual cycle, um, the uh, cervix doesn't undergo the same sort of shedding that um, the normal uterus does during a normal menstrual cycle, but it does undergo changes um, in its secretions based upon the stage of the menstrual cycle. Um, so we talk about the structure and function of the cervix as we go along in our three minutes. So let's start our timer. So the cervix can actually be divided into an ectocervix, which is continuous with the vagina, and the endocervix, which then becomes continuous with the uterine cavity. Um, and the endocervix uh, has an internal opening to the uterine cavity known as the internal os, and the opening to the vagina is known as the external os. So between the two uh, osses, is the endocervical canal. And the endocervical canal uh, is characterized by having these mucus secreting glands. And if you have a look at them, they look like little docking stations for sperm. And funnily enough, um, sperm do dock inside these mucus secreting glands. Um, and live sperm have actually been obtained from uh, these endocervical glands for up to five days post coitus. So uh, five days after intercourse, live sperm can be still found within the female reproductive tract. So you can see these mucus secreting glands. These are the endocervical glands. You can see that they're often ciliated. There's ciliated cells there as well. Um, and they're responsible for producing uh, a mucus. Most of the lubricating mucus of the vagina actually comes from the cervix. And the consistency of that mucus changes during a woman's normal menstrual cycle um, where it becomes uh, very um, viscous. Uh, um, towards the end of the menstrual cycle in the presence of progesterone and becomes very uh, egg white in consistency uh, in uh, when there's um, round ovulation. So it's a really good indicator for a woman whether she's uh, particularly fertile at that point in time. We see the junction or the transition between the endocervix and the uh, ectocervix. We can see this region here. So here's the stratified squamous non creatinized epithelium of the ectocervix and the endocervix is lying by a simple columna or a pseudo stratified columna, uh, ciliated columnar epithelium. You can see lots of immune cells uh, present here. As I mentioned, um, this is actually a trichrome stain section, so um, you can see um, blue here is collagen, and uh, even at this really low magnification, you can see it's extremely dense collagen. Um, and it was originally described to me that if you feel the sort of cartilage of your nose, that's about the consistency of the uh, normal cervix. And then if you feel your bottom lip, that's the consistency of the cervix during parturition when a woman's giving birth. And that's brought about, those changes are brought about through the hormone relaxin. Now these big uh, follicle-like structures, these are known as nabothian follicles or cervical cysts. These actually were former endocervical glands uh, that became trapped when uh, the endocervix actually got transformed into this ectocervix-like structure. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about why that is, but they're a common feature um, of the cervix, so you can keep an eye out for those. Um, so those are known as nabothian follicles or cervical cysts. So that's our three minutes. Um, I know it was a quick overview. Hopefully you got something useful out of that anyway. We'll see you in the next video. Hooroo!